Welcome everybody to another Lightroom Classic editing video. For this shot we will mainly work on improving the light situation, giving the whole scene a lot more contrast and warming up everything a little bit. To follow along you can find the raw file in the description of the video, so let's go. Here we are in Lightroom and the very first thing I have done is to crop the image as you can see, we don't need that much of the sky because that's rather boring. Also the foreground isn't that interesting and a little too chaotic for my taste. I really should have used a longer shutter speed to make the water surface a little less chaotic here. Still I can change that later in Photoshop, let's first focus on the raw adjustments however. So let's start with the profile which I want to switch to Adobe Landscape. This will give us some more base saturation and will make the darkest parts a little brighter as well. Then I do want to adjust the white balance. I do want to make the whole scene a little warmer so I'm going to push the temperature first. I'm actually going to push it quite a bit, somewhere around this range looks pretty good to get that subtle golden light and I'm also going to drop the tint to reduce that purplish color cast you can see right now. So that seems to be a good spot. So once we fix the colors, the next step will be to fix the light. Looking at this gram, the exposure is kind of balanced, but for this shot I want it to be on the darker side. So the first thing I'm doing here is to simply drop the exposure. I want to give this whole image a rather dark look with very bright highlights. So that seems to be a good starting point. Now to get the brighter parts back I'm going to boost the highlights. This will also add contrast to this image. And to further work on the contrast I'm also going to increase the whites. Just like that. This is looking really really good. And for further contrast I can even drop the shadows here. That's much better already. But I think I want to add some overall contrast as well. Now you might think the foreground is getting a little too dark, but in this case I don't think it matters that much because the important part of this image is in the center and the back with those bright mountains. So I kind of want to drive the attention to this area, while I don't want to have much attention in, in the foreground. Now let's also bring in some texture, giving everything some more sharpness and maybe some clarity as well. Okay, that looks good I think. At this point I'm not sure if I like the colors. I think I need to turn it down a bit by bringing down the vibrance just a little bit. But let's leave it at that point for now. We can always change that later anyway. So after those basic adjustments, one thing I am noticing is I don't really like the sky. I think we need to darken it. For this reason I am going to use a linear gradient and let's create one like this. So I don't want to change the mountains much, but that should be fine. And in here let's bring down the exposure to something like this maybe. And I do want to add another linear gradient for the very top part, just like that. And again bring down the exposure. All right, making the top area darker, you can see it's getting a little too yellowish up there. We can counter this problem by bringing down the temperature. So let's just do that. Perfect. Also, you might notice it's getting a little grainy in here. So we might as well drop the texture a bit as well as the clarity. And maybe apply some noise reduction because in those clouds we don't need any structure, so that's working pretty good. All right, and that's already it for the local adjustments, I think. Looks pretty good to me. At this point we can take a closer look at the color grading. And I want to start in the HSL panel. First off, let's adjust the hue. Sometimes my images do have a slight purple color cast in the blue tones, which I usually don't like. To fix that, I am just dropping the purple hue and thus I am giving all the purple tones more of a blue color tone. So this way we can just fix the purple color cast in the sky. All right, now I want to switch over to the saturation tab. 
And here I want to bring down the purple saturation first. And then to not lose too much of those blue tones, I'm going to increase the blue saturation. Just like that. Then let's head into the color grading panel to do the split toning. First off on the highlights, I do want to apply a golden light effect on them. So let's apply a yellow color tone like this one. And let's bring up the saturation. However, I don't want my image to be too vibrant in this case. So I'm using a rather low saturation here. For the shadows, I am going with the blue color tone somewhere around here and let's bring up the saturation just a notch that should be enough and that's it for the color grading let me turn off the split toning you might not notice a difference immediately but the split toning does a good job here so the next thing to do is the sharpening and as always i'm dropping the radius all the way down increasing the detail all the way up and I'm making sure to apply some masking. So only the mountains in this case are affected by the sharpening. And let's increase the amount as well. So that is looking really, really good. So that is it for the Lightroom raw adjustments. I guess that's pretty much it for 95% of the editing of this shot. But let's open it up in Photoshop to finish it. Okay. First, I do want to get rid of a few things like sensor spots. So let's zoom in and I'm using the spot healing brush to just clean them up. Okay, that's much better. Then I might apply some very, very subtle dodging. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. And with this new layer selected, I'm using the TK panel plugin, which allows me to create luminosity masks. With this plugin, I can select specific light ranges like this one or this one, which targets pretty much only those mountain phases which get hit by the light. So that's looking like a good mask. And I'm going to apply it on our overlay layer, just like that as a layer mask, of course. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B. Make sure the brush opacity is reduced a little bit to not overdo this effect. And then I'm adjusting the brush size, make sure the foreground color is set to white. And now let's brighten up those mountain faces some more. So you can see that's a pretty heavy effect. I might want to reduce the layer opacity just a bit so we don't lose too much of that golden light in here. But that is looking pretty good. Finally, let me merge those two layers. And at this point, I want to take a look at the Nick Collection plugin as well. You can see I already have selected the polarization effect, which in this case works really, really good. By increasing the strength, we can kind of separate the mountains from the rest of the image some more. And that's exactly what I want for this shot. Also, it seems we do get some more saturation going on. I think that's okay in this case. Let's apply it like this and also I want to check a few other filters. So let's add another one. Maybe we could add a little glow. So I'm using the glamour glow effect. It is kind of heavy with the basic setup. So I'm going to drop the glow. Also, I want to restore some saturation here. And maybe add some warmth. I don't want to lose too much of the sharpness. That's why I'm playing around with the glow strength like that. But I guess this is kind of good. So let's just apply it like this. All right, that's looking really, really good. So at this point, I do want to stop the editing. Otherwise, I might overdo it. In this case, I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.